Yes, I know I heard the audio book of Pet Cemetery, you know, the story by Stephen King, but, you know, the story by Stephen King was okay, it was just like, you know, uh, more stuff, like, in it than the actual movie. But anyways, uh, this is Derek Yasha, and today I'm going to review the Pet Cemetery movie. And this ain't Stephen King's movie, it's Mary Lambert's movie, it just it just says Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. But, um, you know, mainly the movie starts off with them, of course, uh, you know, going into this new town. And, of course, that they, they meet up with Judd. Now, Judd is played by, um, Fred Gwain, which, you, you know, he's the guy from The Monsters, the TV show The Monsters. Okay, well, anyways, um, you know, they meet up with him, and he's takes them to the pet cemetery, and of course he's talking about, because kids were buried, their pets in the pet cemetery, and of course, cemetery being spelt wrong, kids uh, spelt it wrong on purpose, okay, well anyways, um, you know, uh, Lewis goes to his job or whatever, and then somebody dies there, and of course, um, the guy knows his name, you know, he's like, how the, how the, how do you know my name? And, you know, he's trying to warn him about the pet cemetery throughout the whole movie. You know, he's a ghost and, you know, telling him, you know, um, don't use the pet cemetery. You know, this and that, whatever. And then, um, basically what happens is her family, no, his family leaves to go to her family. Okay, now, um, Lewis hates her family and her fa family hates him. You know, so uh, pretty much uh, he just stays at home and takes care of church when, you know, one day church runs on the road and, of course, church dies. And then, you know, he's feeling bad about it. He's telling uh, Judd, look, okay, um, I can't replace that cat. And then, he, you know, uh, Judd is like, okay, well, you can bury, bury it on the top of Pet Cemetery, the burial grounds. But in order uh, for you to get to the burial grounds, you have to climb up a lot of shit, basically. But yeah, you know, um, mainly the cat comes back to life, it's acting weird, and this and that, and the family comes back, and of course the, the daughter says church smells, and this and that, whatever. Okay, so, um, you know, uh, we get later into the movie. Of course, that, you know, uh, Gage is going to run on the road. And, of course, Lewis is, is trying to stop Gage, but for some odd reason, he's tripping over stuff, and I'll explain why. See, the town is evil. It has some kind of evil presence, of course. You know, letting, letting things die and doing their own process. You know, even if you was to try to stop it, 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 was, it was, death would still come later to that person. So, see, even if he was to save Gage, Gage would die later by something. So, yeah. Um, pretty much that was a sad scene, you know. Um, it had me in tears. I'm not gonna lie, it had me in tears. Um, mainly the funeral scene was even more sadder than that because, you know, you had, uh, you know, her father talking down to Lewis. And, you know, Lewis wants to beat the shit out of him. And then, basically, the, the casket opens, which is fucked up, you know, very fucked up, you know, and everybody was, you know, crying when they seen the casket open. But, um, you know, anyways, um, you know, Lewis stays behind again because she goes to her family, and then he, he decides, hey, I'm gonna go, um, bury my son in, in the burial grounds, and of course bring him back to life. And, you know, um, Judd, you know, Judd is, you know, telling him, I shouldn't have never introduced you to the cemetery, to the uh, burial grounds, to that power. You know, so, yeah, pretty much, um, Lewis uh, gets his son. He's got to be careful, though, from, you know, cops, because, you know, if the cops catch him trying to bury it, bury his own son out of his grave, then he'll uh, go to prison. 
Okay, so anyways, he's climbing up, you know, weird shit starts to happen. You know, it's very fucked up. How could you bury, how could you um, unbury your own son and, you know, bury him in the fucking burial grounds, the Indian burial grounds? That's pretty fucked up and disturbing, if you ask me. It's pretty sick. Okay, so anyways, he does it. He goes back home. And then, you know, Gage comes back to life, but it's not Gage. It's basically, you know, a dark spirit inside Gage. Basically like a zombie twist. It's like spirit and a zombie at the same time. But, of course, um, you know, not a zombie that eats you. A zombie that just kills you. So, yeah, pretty much it's, it's not Gage. You know, the spirit is not Gage. Yeah, so anyways, you know, Judd had it coming to him. You know, Judd did have it coming to him. The son of a bitch. You know, you, you should have not even told Lewis about the, the burial grounds. You know, first of all. You had it coming to you, motherfucker. You had it coming to you. You know? So why should I feel bad about uh, Judd? You know, Judd was a terrible motherfucker to begin with. Okay, so anyways, uh, you know, the mom comes home, and she, and she sees Gage, and of course, the, you know, Gage kills her off screen. When, you know, the next day, uh, Lewis, uh, you know, decides, hey, I got to, uh, you know, uh, kill my cat and kill my kid. Okay, which is not his cat and not his kid. Because they, they're, they have different spirits, you know, evil spirits. Okay, well, here's what he could have did. He could have went to the gun store and bought a shotgun or, you know, a pistol or something like that to fight them off. You know, how he fights uh, Church off, he just uh, puts a steak in, in front of the shot, and of course, Church is eating the steak, and he um, basically injects him with the syringe and kills him. Okay, um, next thing you notice, um... You know, Lewis goes inside the house. The house is acting real weird. And, of course, that, you know, uh, Gage calls the house and says, um, I did something with Mommy. And then Lewis says, what did you do? What did you do? Okay, so then um, what happens is he goes upstairs and then he sees his dead wife. And, of course, that... You know, Gage flies down at him, and of course, you know, just stabbing him, trying to take his um, parts out of him, you know, like his uh, intestines and livers and all that, okay. Yeah, so pretty much he, uh, you know, syringes Gage. You know, if I was him, him I would have brought a shotgun or a pistol or a machine gun. You know, but no, what did he decide to do? He he decided to take a syringe with him, two syringes. Okay, really? If I was in a die situation, I would have at least went to the gun store and brought a fucking shotgun, okay, just to, to fight them two off. You know, because you don't know what they're capable of, the, the cat and the kid. You know, you don't know what they're capable of. Yeah, but anyways, let me get back to the movie. Um, mainly, you know, um, he burns the whole house down, and of course, he thinks he can bring his wife back to life, and of course, you know, the ghost is telling him, um, no, don't do it, and he was like, oh, it was too late for G Gage, it's not too late for her, and you know, the ghost is screaming, no, no, okay, so anyways, his wife comes back home with us, uh, a fucked up zombie, and of course, a gross scene where he's making out of her making out with her and of course she stabs him off screen and kills him well yeah pretty much that's pet cemetery um everything was good about this movie you know five out of five it was excellent um one of the the better movies in my opinion well uh let's see i think it was 1989 one of the better movies of 1989 you know so Pretty much, uh, this movie is good everything. You know, good everything. Yeah, so pretty much I love it, you know. Um, it's an awesome horror classic, you know. Um, pretty much it's sick more than scary. And sad too, tragic. So, you know, yeah, yeah. And I'm hoping there's no fucking remake to this too. I'm just hoping there's no fucking remake. 
Okay, do not make a remake. Please do not. Alright, well, peace.